All right then, so we're making some progress with this app, but there's still a couple of things left to do. What I'd like to do now is flesh out this page where we choose a location. So ultimately what we're gonna do is have a load of different locations here, little buttons or cards, and when we click on one of those, it's gonna update the location by creating a new world time class for that location, getting the time data, returning it to us, and then we're gonna reroute back to the home screen to show that updated data. Now it all sounds quite complex, but we're gonna split it up into little bits. And in this video, what I want to do is just focus on the template of this page. And to do that, we're gonna use something called a list view builder, which we will see in a minute. But first things first, we need a bit of data to work with. So what I'm gonna do is open up the file that we actually need, which is inside pages and it's choose location. So what I'm gonna do is define a bit of data over here, but instead of me writing this out from scratch and boring everyone, I'm just gonna paste this from my repo. So it is just a list and it's a list of world time instances. So we're just creating different instances of the world time class here. And this variable is called locations. Now, inside each world time instance, we have the URL for a different place. We have the location which we show in the UI, and we also have a flag. So these things right here, uk.png, greece.png, and so forth. Now, we don't have those images at the minute, but we will put them in later on to our assets folder. For now, what I'd like to do is just import this file, this world time file inside services so we don't get this red squiggly line and this error because at the minute we couldn't use this because we don't have an import for it. So let's go to import and we want the services. So let's go to this world time services and then it's world underscore time dot dart. So that is this file right here where we made that class up. So now we can use that class inside this file and we no longer get errors right here. But anyway, now we have all of this data inside a list. So what we could do is cycle through this list and output a bit of template for each item in the list. Now to do this, we'll be using something called the list view builder, which is basically gonna allow us to use an inline anonymous function to return a widget template for each item inside this list. Now, earlier in the series, we used the map method to output a template for items in a list, and that was one way of doing it. So I'm showing you a different way of doing it this time using the list view builder. So to do this, first of all, inside our scaffold, we need a body property, and this body property is gonna be a list view dot builder. Now, inside this list view builder, we need to specify a couple of properties. The first one is the item count so how many items are inside the list that we want to cycle through well i can just say locations which is the variable name of the list dot length and that will get us how many items are inside the list so that's the first piece of information we need to provide the second thing is the item builder which in itself is a function which takes two parameters so the first one is the context object and the second one is the index so this is a function but what's going on here well this list view builder will use this item builder function now for every single item inside this list so it will cycle through the list and it will then return a widget template a widget tree for each item inside this list now each time we fire the function we get access to the index of that item in the list so to begin with it's index 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 and so forth so we can use that to actually get data from that specific element in the list. So we need to return a template now for each item inside this list. And the way we do that is by saying return, and then we're gonna return a card template. We've seen this in the past. And inside this card, we need a child property. So we'll say child, and then this is gonna be a list tile. Now we've not seen list tile yet, but let me just go to the docs and give you a quick preview of what this looks like. It looks a bit like this, where we can have a little item image or thumbnail on the left, and then on the right, we're gonna have a little text label. So that's what we're gonna do. We want some kind of flag icon and then the name of the location. So that's why we're using this list tile widget right here. So inside this list tile, we need a couple of different things. First of all, we need an on tap function or an on tap property, which will be a function. And that is gonna fire when a user taps this particular location, a bit like on pressed. So after that, 
we need a title and this is going to be the actual text that's going to show inside this list tile so we need a text widget and what do we want to output well we want to output this location property on this particular item so we can say locations which is the list itself then we want to use the index which will be 0 1 2 or 3 or 4 etc so we get that particular item that we're currently iterating and then we want the location property which is either london or berlin or something else so that's what we're outputting right here so let me just test this so far but before we do let me just replace this thing with a semicolon because this is the end of a return statement so let's save this and then we can see these tiles right here so that's good we made a start now we can see each one of these items has been output inside a card inside a list tile so now we just need these little flag icons now at the minute we don't have the flag icons in there but i've got a folder on my desktop with all of these flag icons inside them so i'm going to select all of those and by the way you can get these again from my github repo just select the lesson 34 branch from the drop down and just go into the assets folder to get these so I'm going to grab all of those and I'm going to put them inside assets over here press OK and now we can see all these so now we want to output one of these images next to each one of these so let's do that and we do that using a property inside the list tile called leading so this is the leading image now we're going to use a circle avatar we've seen this before in one of the earlier lessons in the ninja id card this is like a circle with a background image that will be a picture so inside this circle avatar we need to specify that background image so background image and this is going to be an asset image and inside this we need to specify the path to this particular image that we want to use for this location now we know it's in the assets folder but then how do we know which file we actually want out of these well we store it up here because we enter it in into the flag property so if it's london then we're going to use the uk flag if it's nairobi then kenya etc so we use this flag property so all we need to do now is use our dollar sign and then curly braces because remember we're going to use square bracket notation and if we're using square bracket notation or dot notation we have to use the curly braces when we output a variable inside a string. So I want the locations which is the list itself then the index to get the specific item we're currently iterating and then we want the flag property. So let me now save this and cross my fingers. And now we can see all of these things right here so now we can see the icon of the flag and the location so that looks pretty good right and that was pretty easy to do using this list view builder now one more thing i want to do is just add some padding around each card so i think i'm going to surround this with a padding widget so go to add padding over here and we'll say instead of all this is going to be symmetric so symmetric and then inside we want a vertical property which is going to be just one pixel and then horizontal so left and right and that is going to be four pixels okay so save that and now we get a bit more space around those items okay cool so now we have our template sorted but at the minute if we click one of these things nothing is happening yet yeah we have this thing over here let's go to this on tap function and we could even say down here you know print and then we'll just print out the locations and then index and then the location itself just so we can see that this is actually working so save it and then go to run oops we need our semicolon so save it and then go to run and i'm just going to hard or hot restart and hopefully when we click on one of these things now if we go to edit location then we're going to see the location print down here so i can click Cairo and we see Cairo Jakarta New York etc so this works but instead of just printing this here what we need to do is then actually get the data the time for that location using the get time method inside the world time class over here and once we have that time then we can reroute back to the home page with that data and update the home page with that new data so we'll tackle that in the very next tutorial